healthy chunk is. Welcome to Berlin too, and uh, how are you tonight? We're good, happy to be here. So, where does the inspiration come from uh, for your music and your lyrics? Well, I'm, I love the grunge scene, you know, Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, in terms of like influence. But for me, where the lyrics come from, uh, it's kind of auto autobiographical, you know, it's about myself, my life, but it's also about society, what I see around me that, you know, uh, I don't like. And I think it's important to talk about it, you know, what's going on in the world, um, climate change, and uh, we've got a song about that, and politic, you know, politician, you know, like the Brexit. Exactly. The world at the moment is, yeah. is in a crisis. I mean, in the UK, certainly, we have a political crisis oh. at the moment. So that's affecting us. That's affecting our music. Hence the song Kill the Hate. And I think that's what we meant to do as a band. We meant to kind of question those things and maybe inspire mm. people to question it as well. Yeah. You know, just this is a mission. OK, uh, you have said that uh, there's a pinch of theater also yeah. in your band. Uh, how does that manifest itself? Is it in the lives? Is it in the designs of your band? Or that is actually really uh, primarily through Nina, who had uh, she studied theater when she was at school. Who tell you herself? Yeah, I mean this is my main training is theater. I did theater for like ten years. And then I went into music, but that was my first love. So I love to approach the stage more like a theatre rather than a, a music thing, if, if it makes any sense. It's a performance, but it's not so much a, a musical thing for me. Yeah. And Dave is naturally theatrical. <laughs> what is theatrical mean, actually? <laughs> but it's like, it's like Iggy Pop. I mean, if you look at Iggy Pop, you know, he's, he's a performer, you know. He's a lovely darling. We want to put on a show. We want to put on a show, you know, to entertain people. That's what, you know, to is it, maybe maybe it's partly to escape from the realities of. Exactly, it is. Know, it that's is. Uh, that's yeah, what people go to gig too. for, you know. <laughs> you know. Let's just forget about our troubles and our woes for a moment. Enjoy the music and celebrate life. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's talk about the name of the band. Where does Healthy Chunkies come from? Well, this is for you to answer that. Well, uh, uh, he's responsible. <laughs> actually, you came up with a name, but it's, it, but it's because I, uh, I, I grow this mushroom, this health mushroom, which I've been growing for years. It's called kombucha. It's a Japanese uh, mushroom. It's it's got amino acids. It's good for your health. And uh, when Nina and I met, I was drinking this mushroom drink every day, and we were getting like high on pot and smoking. And and uh, she just turned around and said to me one day, "You're a healthy junkie. Let's call the band Healthy Junkies." I laughed, and we kept it. <laughs> um, but actually, it's provoked quite a lot of discussion because people always ask us where the name come from and it's kind of like evolved as well I mean we talk in our biog about and we were, we were ranting on about this like years ago the idea that uh, the pharmaceutical companies dish out all these drugs to dumb down a nation essentially to control us and recently in the news in the UK anyway there's a lot about uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, giving out addictive drugs to people and you know they're just big drug addicts really aren't they <laughs> yeah and it's supposed they're to be okay like it's supposed to be okay it's supposed to be okay to kind of like do those pharmaceutical drugs it's accepted but then if you smoke weed they give you a lot of uh, of trouble yeah we're not f we, we are definitely pro the legalization of marijuana yeah and cbd oils which is obviously all being done as well right yeah, um, it just gets surprising when people are really offended too. You're like, really? Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, not then. Uh, you want to say something I, on the mic? I, yeah, I was just oh, going to yeah. say that uh, what, what really annoys me is um, is the fact that these big farm chem companies have gone ahead and, and, and they're making synthetic already. You know, I mean, CBD oils haven't been um, kind of commonly used for, you know, for a very long time amount of time and as soon as soon as it became a thing then the farm chem companies got in on it and then they're made, making synthetic cbd oils and i just kept it's kind of doesn't really i don't understand that i can't understand if you can buy the real thing why would you want to go to a a company that makes synthetic cbd oil 
Well said, Pompey. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> okay, uh, you already mentioned uh, community, how important that is, and London. So uh, you run your monthly event, um, Punk and Roll Rendezvous. Mm. Yeah. That's right. So uh, for a long time now already. So tell me a bit about that event. Well, basically, uh, the criteria is we have usually five or six bands every month, the second Saturday of the month. There's always a band from out of town, could be abroad. So uh, we ended up booking a lot of bands from different towns. They would ask us back. We, you, you get a national circuit going then. Um, it's a free entry night and we rely on donations and money from the bar and it works out all the bands get paid anyone can go there and it makes it a bit of a scene because people who come here they must they like all the promoters or so they see the band and then they book them for their shows you know and it becomes like a network and a, and a community really you know everyone knows each other and it's like a scene you know a little bit like in the 90s with you had mud honey and you had all those grunge bands you know nirvana soundgarden and i like to think the underground scene is london is like that There's, it's very good like lively scene at the moment it's a really healthy scene the underground so many great yeah, underground so bands true. out there so much like talent out there too you know and but they're, 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 they're being ignored so by the mainstream yeah, they're nice. being ignored by the media and then uh, there's so much talent to be discovered really so why in your mind are these uh, alternative communities so important Wow, it's like the killing of like live music. Well, we feel in London, everyone's like going on about it, and yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, yeah. we got so much stuff we want to bring out there, like not just us, but so many other bands too. Which yeah, and there's no, there's what a stage to do it on too. <laughs> No, and it's also because like uh, people come together, they get to know each other, they got to be themselves. Uh, you know, it's like living in a community full of people, your friends, it's like your family almost, you know. And I see it as very important because nowadays there's so many big businesses, big everything, corporate thing going on that you need to have something like that, you know, and they're trying to kill it, they're trying to. Also, you know, in London, a big city, you know, people don't talk to their neighbours. People are very paranoid. People are scared. There's a lot of violence there. It's not this. It's not what it was. And um, so we have our own community. We have a, a community of people who we trust and who are kind of all on the same page, have the same sort of values. Regular supporters of like of the of the night that Nina puts on. You know, we very rarely have a bad night. I mean, the, the people that support the whole thing. Are, generally there and we get a really good crowd right you know so there's a great scene in london come and come and visit us if yeah. you while well, we've still got venues you know <laughs> yeah because a lot of venues, are being, venues like right. hand over fist and that's that's the problem and fans aren't going to have anywhere to play soon a lot of venues have been closed uh, recently yeah in london there are still quite a lot there luckily but yeah so it's a bit of a worry with so, it. Right, what they tend to do is they'll, live, they'll have a pub that's been there local, for venues and your local bands and everything there'll, there'll be a pub that's uh, been there for like 150 years putting on music and then they'll build a block of flats right next to it <laughs> and then what happens is the people in the flats complain about the noise from the pub and so then they stop they stop they don't give them the license anymore this has been going on quite a lot there's a move to change that uh, the Labour government has uh, I mean even really iconic buildings like the Astoria when, when they're not knocked that down that was just you know devastating I think to a lot of people I mean that was just a, a place to go that was a venue at, you know that, that had bands on, on you know total regularly the, the thing is if they kill all the, all the underground venues there won't be any more venues in the middle for bands underground bands to play because then you're only talking about the o2 venues or like the more kind of mainstream venues and then where bands like us are going to play you know this is why it's important to have something like that because we can exist somewhere you know you, you, bands need a, a stepping stone they need to all the great bands of the past like the kinks and the beatles and the rolling stones they all played these small venues and they, that, that's how they came up through the, the doors and the mm, you know, yeah whiskey a go -go. places like the hundred club and it's really important on. for you know for rock and roll to survive to have these places. Yes. Yeah, it's. I think that's happening everywhere now, yeah. and it's a very yeah. important 
important work so keep it up and still a bit touching on that how difficult it is now now to maintain that community with all the pressure from big companies and uh, the concert places being shut down it is pretty difficult to be honest but i think there's more bands coming in now there's a lot more bands uh that weren't there before so i think because there's more people into it interested into it i really believe that there's a future in it you know i do i believe it's we've true, noticed it's the change. Right, really. yes. we've noticed the change over the last because we've been oh, yeah. the band's been this band's been together nine years yeah and we've really noticed the change we've noticed that, that this underground scene is is burgeoning it's blossoming it's growing and it's yeah. not it's not about to die I mean, I'm sure it's going to just carry on, you know. I believe it. It's DIY. It's best, really, isn't it? Yeah. It's <laughs> never going to die. You're always going to have people like that that don't fit into society, like the Aussie do. So you're always going to have people like that, you know. And we're not going to take it lying down anyway, no. are we, Nina? No. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah. We're going to fight. <laughs> are we, Dave? <laughs> we're standing yeah. in a corner and shout. <laughs> Amen to that. Uh, coming back to yeah, Healthy Chunkies and uh, Punk and Roll Rendezvous, how does the future look like for your band? Well, we've got an awful lot of gigs to do between now and the end of the year <laughs> already. I think we just want to get through that first. But there's new songs in the air. We've got new songs, new releases. I just want to keep pushing and moving forward, you know, and uh, keep on playing the flag and uh, not giving up. I mean, we like to be express ourselves, be creative and write new songs, record songs. We're working on several videos at the moment. We've got a lot of stuff to do. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Yeah, Dave? our tour diaries to, like, to smash out as well. Still, tour diary? Yeah. Oh, we've got a tour diary of the USA that's going to come out that we've, we like to film behind the scene type of stuff. We do, we've done that with MK Ultra actually. Um, so, the, yeah, you know, to inspire people, maybe in a hundred years, some youngster will watch it and they'll be like, oh my God, this is cult, you know, this is... Yeah, they'll probably be yeah. banned yeah. by yeah, them. Sure. Yeah. Just, they won't be any, you know, won't be, it'll be illegal, be outlawed. <laughs> I like sure the idea of being an outlaw anyway, <laughs> don't you? We're misfit, outlaw, rebels, everything. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We get slayed, but it's all cool. So <laughs> we just still do it anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much and break a leg tonight. Thank Thanks, Jan. Yeah, man! Yeah! yeah. <laughs>